Hello, this is Reza Rat from Radicad. In this video, I want to talk about uh, migration from Dataflow Gen 1, which you can create it either in Power BI or Power Platform, Power Apps, the Dataflow that you created over there, which is called Gen 1, to Dataflow Gen 2, which is the Dataflow we create in Microsoft Fabric. Uh, let's see how you can do that migration. Let's check it out. When you create the data flow, um, there are two options. One option is to create Gen 1, the other one is Gen 2. Uh, Gen 2 is only added since Microsoft announced uh, Fabric, which is like about a year. Uh, but data flow in general has been available for many years. Uh, data flow basically is power query process that you run in the cloud, in the service. Uh, it doesn't have anything special about Power BI report. This would be a process that runs the Power Query, uh, Power Query transformation, connecting to a data source, getting the data, transforming it, and loading it into a destination. Uh, this was available in Microsoft Power BI service and also a little bit later in Power Platform, in Power Apps. Uh, but now it is called Dataflow Gen 1 because the new generation is a slightly different. Let's go and check it out what are the differences and how you can uh, change that. So I'll switch to my screen. Okay, as you see here, I'm in uh, my screen, switching to this view. So I'm inside my Power BI environment. And in this Power BI environment, I have a data flow already. Just to show you the difference between these two, when you create a new item, there are two options. One is a normal data flow, the other one is data flow gen two, uh, which uh, they are um, slightly different. Let me enable my zooming tool so that I can show this much better to you in a zoomed view. Um, so as you see, data flow gen one and data flow gen two. You can only create data flow gen two in a uh, fabric enabled workspace, which basically means that if you have a fabric capacity, either trial or uh, a purchased capacity and assign it to your workspace, then you can go ahead and create data flow gen two. But data flow gen one, uh, or what is called here data flow, you can create it even if you have a Power BI Pro account or inside Power Apps as well. Um, so here I have a data flow gen one already. When I go and open it, um, let's just go to, to the edit mode. This is loading. Uh, inside Power Query Gen 1 and Power Query Gen 2, there isn't much difference it, in terms of the data transformation. Transformations options at the time of creating this video is pretty much the same. It is using the Power Query engine behind the scene. It is accepting MS scripting. Uh, you have a very nice graphical interface that you can go and build your data transformations. Here you see I have a Dataflow Gen 1 uh, or Power BI data flows, which includes a bunch of um, tables inside the folder and some other tables as well. And each of these has their own MS script. Now I want to change this to be a Dataflow Gen 2 because in Dataflow Gen 2, one of the features that we have at the moment is that I can load the data into destinations. There are four destinations available, Azure SQL Database, uh, Custo Database, KQL Database, or uh, Lakehouse or Warehouse inside Microsoft Fabric. With Dataflow Gen 1, your destinations are basically limited to ADLS Gen 2 as CSV files. If you are using Power BI data flows or what we call as analytical data flows, if you use standard data flows, your destination um, like the data flows that you go and create inside uh, Power Apps, for example, those are uh, setting the destination into a Dataverse. Now, I have separate video about all of those, so you can go and check it out about Dataflow Gen 1 and Dataflow Gen 2 and uh, some information about those. But what this video in particular is about how we can migrate this. Unfortunately, there isn't a migration tool at the time of creating this video, uh, but migration is a simple process. I'll show you how it is. You'll go and open your Dataflow Gen 1, like what I did already. Inside your Dataflow Gen 1, you have this option that you can actually export this template. This is called Power Query Template. It includes all the uh, definitions, metadata in here, which are tables, parameters, functions, folders, MS scripts related to that, not the data, everything except the data. Uh, more like your project file. You can export that. This template would be a file with the extension of PQT. Let's call this, for example, data flow dimension template. Uh, 
And once you do that, this would download that file as a PQT file. That is a zip file. You can open it, you can unzip it and see other files underneath. I have a separate video on that subject as well. You can go and check it out. Uh, but this is not about that. This is about now how we can go and create data flow gen 2 from this. So I'll close this and discard any changes. I don't want to make any changes. Then I'll go to a workspace that is fabric enabled. In this case, this would be, for example, this workspace. In this workspace, I can create uh, fabric objects because this is a workspace uh, associated with a fabric capacity. And when I go ahead and create a new data flow, uh, I'll choose a data flow gen 2. Uh, when you create the data flow gen 2 or, or even when you create data flow gen 1, you have this option that you can actually build it from scratch or you can build it using import from a Power Query template. And that is this option. Like in the very first window that you see build a um, data flow, you have this option that says import a Power Query template. So when you click on that, you'll just need to select that Power Query template file. Uh, I'll go and select that. And this will bring everything, all of your metadata, tables, folders, parameters, functions, anything that you had over here. And this would start, um, start validating your queries. Now, uh, after this step, so your data flow is basically migrated. After this step, there are two things that you need to be doing. First is that all your connections will lose their properties. So this means that you have to go and uh, do the connection settings again, which means probably using uh, the username, password, those kind of things like the API keys that you had in your connections. In my case, my connection was a Excel file that is publicly available. So I'm not really going to do any changes, but here you might have options to enter username, password, password and once you set it per data source it would scan it and fix it for all the tables that use the same data source so here you see that they are all having this error at the moment or warning but after the validation process is done they should all get fixed quickly because in this case all of them use the same uh, the same source. If you add multiple sources, you have to do this per, uh, per connection. Once you do that, then pretty much this is ready. You can rename your data flow. I can call this data flow uh, dimensions uh, gen 2 or whatever you might call it. And then the most important as aspect of data flow gen 2 at this time is that destination. So now you can go ahead and actually add a destination. And this is that destination that I talked about. It is available only in Dataflow Gen 2, which you have the Azure SQL database, Lakehouse, Warehouse, or KQL database. Uh, you'll choose the destination that you want, and this should be done per table. So for example, here I can choose that, or, or we can do it from here as well, both places. So you'll choose the destination. For example, let's say in this case, it would be a lake house connection. Then I'll go to the next. I'll go and choose the workspace that I have this lake house in. And you probably have those objects. If you are building a full uh, fabric solution, you'll have lake house and warehouse that you can load data into that. So in this case, I'm going to just choose this, um, this workspace that I have some lake house and warehouses in it. And I'll just go and choose um, one of these. Now, in these probably I have a table like that, but I'll go and choose it anyway. Uh, and then click on next. Uh, this will check if there's a table over there or if it's not, it would create a new table. You'll have the option to set the mapping. You'll have all the destination features that the data flow gen 2 gives you, such as, for example, ability to append or, or replace, which I have explained it in data flow gen 2 videos, fabric data flow video. Uh, go and check it out. So once you've done that, once you save this setting, you'll do that for all the tables. Uh, let's assume that I have done that for all the tables. Uh, at the moment, I just done it for the customer table, but you have to do it for all the tables that you want to be loaded into the destination, and then you'll publish it. Uh, the publish process would uh, run through all the validations. We'll check is, is everything is all right, save it. And then this data flow can be scheduled to refresh like a normal Power BI uh, Gen 1 data flow, or you can add it as an activity inside your data pipeline and schedule the refresh 
of that. So that is how you actually migrate from Dataflow Gen 1 to Dataflow Gen 2. At the moment, there are not much differences between these two except the destination, but my feeling is that as we go uh, through the time, um, in the future, we would have more features in Dataflow Gen 2, so better to move your Dataflow Gen 1 to Gen 2. And as you saw, the process is not a, a complicated process and you can um, start it right away. I hope you liked this video and uh, if you liked this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye.